here we are with David Burns. Uh, we mostly don't need an introduction, but anyway, I'll give a quick one. Uh, David Burns, he's the maintainer of Python Bindings, a member of projects, uh, Selenium Projects uh, Technical Leadership Committee. He's also the co-editor of WebDriver Spec and the chair of W3C Browser Tools and Testing Working Group. Uh, stage is yours, David. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Manoj. What I'm going to be talking about is what happens whenever we make certain calls in Selenium and try to give you a better understanding at a very low level all the way into the browser when it does an action and then returns all the way back to the client bindings. We're going to go through uh, each of these different layers along the way. I'm going to try to give a bit of explanation. Um, and the idea behind giving you all of this information is that the, if you understand how everything works, hopefully this will allow you to write better Selenium code along the way. Um, so before we get into that, who am I? Uh, so my name's David. Uh, I, uh, I head up the open source team at, within Browser Stack, and our role in Browser Stack is to kind of look after key uh, open source projects that are core to Browser Stack and kind of make sure that Browser Stack is giving back uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, so kind of a lot of our work currently is supporting Selenium. Uh, I am the co-editor of the WebDriver specification with Simon. Um, I am the chair of the W3C's Browser Testing and Tools Working Group. So this is the group that uh, um, coordinates all the work between all the different browser vendors and other interested parties to make sure that um, the specification works and we can kind of make sure that it works between all browsers and um, all vendors. Um, before joining Browser Stack, I used to be the code owner for Gecko Driver and the WebDriver projects within Mozilla, looking after all of those, as well as kind of looking after interoperability uh, projects and things like that. So I have a fair understanding of how browsers work, and hopefully I get to impart uh, as much of my knowledge as possible to, uh, to everyone, and I hope you will enjoy this. Um, so the main uh, thing that we're going to look at today is navigation, um, because this tends to be one of the uh, areas that people get stuck in, um, either like pages take too long to load, or uh, when a page is loaded, their tests start failing because kind of there's other problems. And so if I can at least impart how this works, you'll we'll, we'll see how it um, all hangs together in a meaningful way uh, and kind of um, you can learn to kind of make your test more robust, remove a lot of that flakiness that we kind of everyone's hits at some point uh, because you know what to expect, where the gotchas are and, and everything. But before we start with that, um, I want to make sure that we understand what happens when we have simple bits of code. So in here, in this case, uh, we're just instantiating Firefox. Uh, it looks fairly similar if you're in Java or .NET or Ruby. Um, and we know that the bottom line will have a browser started up for you. But what actually happens underneath the hood um, kind of, in some cases, breaks a lot of rules when it comes to object orientation and things like that. Um, because like by instantiating an object, it's kind of doing nearly all the work. Um, and we always are taught that should never be the case. It should kind of get a, the basic setup and then go. But in this case, we know it's going to start up um, a driver. Um, and it's also going to start up the browser. And so we've we've looked at the uh, left-hand column, the client bindings, and now I'm going to start taking you into the driver, uh, and then from there I'm going to take you into the browser. And within the like milliseconds that kind of that command takes to execute, uh, we've got multiple applications up and running 
and started and working. Um, and this feat is even more impressive when you start to think about like, are you running on a Selenium grid? Like, are you using uh, companies like BrowserStack to drive your browsers? Like having that quick in instantiation um, and access super fast uh, when you've got the internet is quite impressive. And so we try to always make a lot of this uh, fast and it also helps with our scalability. So when the client, the first thing the client bindings will do is it will look for um, a driver on, on your path. Uh, or if you've passed it in, uh, it will take what you've given and start that up. So you'll find that executable, start it up. Now, in starting up that driver, uh, it, it will start the executable. It will create uh, an HTTP server that is then ready and waiting uh, for commands to be sent through. And the first thing that will need to come through is a new session request. And so it will go, it will send a, an HTTP request saying I need um, a driver. And so in this case, it's fairly simple. It's gonna ask for Firefox, um, and but you can kind of set other details. Um, and uh, the driver note will look for the browser again, either on the path or kind of in uh, its usual places. So kind of if you, like if you, if it always knows that it should be in this area or this area or this area, like if it can find it, uh, the different versions of a product, it will try start one of them up and start working with it. And then once it, it, it trusts that the browser is up and running, uh, it will return to you. So you can now start sending commands. Um, and the way it, it kind of gets to all of this is that it kind of, it does its request. Its request is kind of REST-ish. Uh, so we don't follow true REST, um, but it's kind of REST-ish uh, and it allows you to kind of do these things. So here we have uh, a post um, to session. This creates the new session uh, and we, we set the, um, browser name, so we want Firefox. If you were to send this, uh, send through Chrome to uh, to Gecko driver, um, it would error and say it can't start up that browser because when when it started up, or it can look into in like do a bit of introspection into the browser before starting it up because that can be quicker. Um, it'll go no, I can't do this, and then error out. Um, but it allows you to kind of get there and up and running. Um, and when it's finished, it because Selenium tries its best to be as synchronous as possible, uh, because when we're thinking about our tests, when we're thinking about our uh, like flows in code and things like that, we tend to think uh, in a synchronous way. So it's always like, I will log in, I will click this button, I will type in this box, I will do this next step. Um, I will then move to this next page. It's always done things like that. Even though the browser itself is designed to be incredibly asynchronous. So it will kind of inject things into an event loop, um, which will, is constantly spinning. And when it gets to the top of the, the loop and is executed, it might fire off events. Um, but if you, Sometimes things could take lo longer running. Uh, sometimes there are multiple event queues, depending on what you're looking for. Because like if you're looking at something that could be uh, being rendered, that might be slightly different to the JavaScript event queue, which is kind of single threaded uh, and is off the main thread. Uh, so kind of in browser terms, uh, things that are on the main thread are things that could block the browser. And so like if if you have something stuck in there, that's when you might get the beach ball effects if you're on OSX or kind of your browser uh, stops uh, responding on other um, operating systems. So kind of you, you never wanted that. And so you've got all these things kind of off running around. Um, and so kind of where possible, we try to do things synchronously so that you don't need to think about it and you can start using it straight away. Um, but now let's get to the kind of the nitty gritty. So let's start looking at navigation. Um, navigation is, uh, 
kind of the cornerstone we need to be able to navigate. Um, Selenium requires that you give a fully qualified uh, URL kind of, so it needs to have its scheme, the full path and everything. Um, and this is important because kind of um, we never want to be making guesses. Um, I know some kind of other frameworks allow you to do that. Um, but historically, whenever we've tried to kind of introduce that, and I'm talking like a good 10 years ago when we were working on Selenium, it like it never really worked. And so kind of it needs to have its fully qualified domain. Um, and so what this does is if we kind of look, think about the HTTP is that it will do a post and say, take me to this URL. Um, it will go to the driver. The driver will uh, may mutate the, the packet slightly and then send it on to the browser. And the, the reason why it might mutate it is the, um, the lines between driver and browser are different between each uh, browser vendor. So kind of with Chrome driver, it might, it speaks um, CDP, uh, so the Chrome debug protocol. Um, with Gecko driver, it um, speaks uh, like its own bespoke transport layer uh, into the backend, which we call the marionette. Uh, and uh, with Safari driver, it, um, it kind of speaks its own like JSON to dev, DevTools protocol into the browser. So it's all, everyone's unique. And this is kind of why we, the drivers are, need to understand everything that the client bundles are going to send. Um, it sends it through to the browser um, and it says, right, let's go to this URL. Um, and we know that it needs to return when a page is loaded. Unfortunately, uh, Loaded has different meanings to different people. Um, and so kind of if I were to take a um, browser vendor, like if I was to go to a browser vendor and say, hey, can you just make sure this page is loaded? Um, like they'll just look at you funny. And so if you think about like truly just start, start thinking about applications that you've worked on, the application you're working on right now, what does loaded mean for you? Um, and so it can be uh, fairly, oh, sorry, yeah, it, like it means different things. And so like if we look at like the web 1.0 where it, everything was uh, rendered on the server, sending it across, uh, when you see everything, that tends to mean it's done. Um, and that's assuming there's no JavaScript, no Ajax, no kind of progressive enhancements, no nothing like that. As it, as it, it arrives, then it's done. Perfect. Um, if we start adding iframes into it, done changes very slightly. Uh, if you start adding um, uh, the rel keyword to uh, which... Um, in kind of in HTML allows you to kind of down, so download things asynchronously, um, but it also means that um, done means and loaded means something slightly different, and and so you keep like all these features which are designed to allow people to um, have web pages load super fast and become usable as kind of new and different things are loaded mean that we kind of get into this weird space. But before we even get there, we also have the problem of certificates. Um, in my experience, and I know a lot of the Selenium committers and core people have had this uh, at their work at, and while we've been supporting Selenium users over the years, um, people need, want uh, certificates to prove that their application works on HTTP, um, oh, HTTPS, sorry. Um, but, you know, QA departments are notoriously underfunded uh, for the work that they do. And so they go, well, uh, you can have a certificate, but you need to sign it yourself. And so when you get to automation, um, 
a lot of tools just go, don't know what to do. Uh, and so kind of Selenium decided that we needed to have a way to get around this. Um, and it has has that all built in. Um, and so you would never see this if you had a self-signed certificate or kind of uh, basic certificate errors. Uh, there are certain error um, certificate problems that are not supported, but those generally are kind of for a good reason. So it could be like, you know, uh, it's signed for the wrong place or things like that, or there's just errors in the certificate. Um, and it's better to kind of error out than kind of support those um, when we're thinking of kind of people who are trying to use this every day. Um, and so, oh, actually, I'll go into that one. Um, we've got all these certificate problems. We've got progressive enhancements. And this leads to the case of like, get will return. Uh, so this is the second last line. Get will return uh, when it thinks a page is loaded. And so this like in general terms is kind of uh, ready state is complete and the, uh, the load event has been fired. Um, but if you're using React, Ember, Angular, or kind of you've created your own and you're or you're using uh, progressive enhancement as kind of new things start are downloaded into the uh, browser um, as and when, um, it's always best to kind of think about uh, the element that you're looking for. Um, and make sure that you're explicitly waiting for it um, because like th you never know when it's going to be there and if it is there like um, sometimes and in, uh, in this case I've just looked for the element but like you there's other ways that we can do it but sometimes you need to wait um, until kind of other uh, other activities have happened and so like always be aware that just getting something, uh, is not as simple as kind of just getting a page. And this is one of the m main reasons why we people regularly ask for, um, I'd like to uh, use Selenium and see what the uh, HTTP um, result was for this. And it's like, okay, but, you know, we could, re we could tell you that going to that URL was a 200, but what, in reality, you're probably looking for is like, were there any 404s? Were there uh, any 500s uh, in doing that get? And that's what kind of why um, people have never um, never allowed the access to this. And famously, there was a issue 141 um, that kind of made made the rounds when everything was on Google code. And you can still, if you searched up um, Selenium issue 141, uh, you'll have some very interesting reading. So now that we've got kind of the basic case working, we've got to make sure that there are no edge cases, right? So in this case, like I've navigated to a page um, and then I've said, actually, I ne need to navigate to some anchor on that page. In this case, because um, we're already on the page, um, we're not forcing any reloads. Uh, we're just saying navigate. And browsers have a, a system called a BF cache. Uh, and the BF cache allows kind of pages to load super fast because the browser will kind of make an educated guess of, should I be using the cached version? Should I be using the page that's already there rather than reloading it? Or should I be using uh, something else? Uh, and so kind of service workers comes into this. Like it, it tries to like get all of this. And um, because Selenium's main role uh, in a lot of cases is to try emulate what a user would do. Um, we just say to the browser, hey, could you just load load this? And how it loads it is up to the browser. And every browser is incredibly unique in this case. Um, and so in the, in the case of 
like loading some anchor, we've got um, no load event will ever fire, um, which means that like we we don't we can't just tell the browser can't just go, oh because you've navig you've said navigate we need to kind of just wait for load events we can't just do that um, we can't just like wait 10 seconds hoping a load event will come and then error because like in this case it's a valid point that you've gone to um there is no error and so erroring is not an acceptable problem and so there are different like little edge cases around navigation that kind of cause um a lot of like things for us to care about and wonder and things like that uh, and so again uh sometimes uh just understanding that like how navigation works in a browser can be important to kind of removing some flakiness. In this case, like it should return near instant because uh, browser vendors are kind of understand how BF caches work and things like that. So you'll, you'll be fine. Um, so we've navigated, we've done all of that. That's really cool. Um, and I'm pretty sure that that's the only way to kind of load a page, right? Right? Um, no, unfortunately not. There's clicking. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to uh, breeze over a few bits and pieces but um, so I can get back to the navigation part. Um, but clicking... Uh, does multiple steps. Obviously, we need to find an element. We need to make sure the element uh, has is still in the DOM so that we can interact with it. Um, and so kind of you might have cases where if it's been removed from the DOM and then added back, so uh, front-end frameworks kind of do this as on data reloads. They'll kind of mutate the, the DOM um, and it can create issues for tests. Um, it needs to find it. It needs to check if an element is visible. Um, so v visibility in Selenium is um, a best guess of can a, a user click on this element and can the user see it and uh, interact with it. Um, and then uh, once it's there, uh, it will scroll to it uh, to make sure that the element is within the viewport. So the viewport is like the visible part of a browsing uh, context, and so kind of a web page. So whatever you can see on your screen, that is a viewport. And if you scroll up and down, the viewport moves uh, through the page. Um, and then we get to the point where there's a click. Uh, and here we are. We have... Uh, We've navigated to a page, it's returned. We're now going to find an element. Uh, so kind of, again, this is simplistic. This is web 1.0, um, but we're going to find a link. We're going to click on it. Now, um, the link in this case uh, will navigate to another page. Uh, again, Selenium will try to do its best to understand what you're trying to think of. And so it will look for certain events that are happening. Uh, so like when you navigate uh, to a new page, and so by a new page, I'm, I'm explicitly not talking about single page applications. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but this is like, it will load up a brand new uh, URL uh, and do everything. And so kind of a browser at that point can look for certain events like, is the page being uh, destructed? So is it being taken away and moved out? Uh, and like, is a new page being loaded? And so we can kind of look for kind of basic things like that. And for uh, a large part of uh, Selenium's life, um, that was done. Obviously, um, as we get into the realms of single page applications and things like that. That's where um, these edge cases start to happen. And we can get into areas where like there might be a page load event and we need to kind of understand um, 
where that is, how quickly that is going to happen um, so that we don't slow down tests. Because like, if people are writing tests, the thing that they really genuinely want all the time is fast feedback. Even if the test fails, like they want it to fail fast. But if they want it to pass, they want it to pass fast too. And so we want this genuine uh, quick feedback loop that allows you to get uh, information. And so in this case, we click a link, it will do uh, it what in the web driver specification, what we call post navigation checks. It will check that like uh, the URL has been loaded. It will go through and check if there's a certificate. It will allow the certificate, uh, like ignore the certificate at that point. Um, it will then check that the page has loaded. And so kind of, it loaded it again is that incredibly over, overloaded term, uh, excuse the pun, but it's kind of, it It needs to know that the page is there, visible um, and accessible. Uh, so the, the DOM is in, uh, has loaded, uh, images for the most part have loaded, CSS has loaded, JavaScript has loaded. Um, and th these are all things that um, if you wanted to kind of go look it up in the um, HTML spec, uh, and I I encourage it because understanding how browsers work for automation is incredibly important to understand like how all the different features work because then you can get the most out of it. And you, you never know, you might even find issues in how uh, people are, developing applications uh, by using those features. Um, but so we've seen the web 1.0, this, we've got another anchor. Again, it's somewhat web 1.0, uh, also kind of somewhat of a feature that we see in um, single page applications. And this is interacting with anchors. So here we find an element, uh, we click on it, um, it is navigating, so the URL is changing, but there is no navigation events ever going to happen. And so we need to understand that like, this is important that we don't just sit idle for kind of half a second to a second waiting for those things inside the browser. Um, we wait for certain things or we just kind of go, this is just an anchor of the previous place. I'm sure the BF cache is going to care about this and I'm just going to kind of jump out. And that's what tends to happen is that it kind of does this jump out, works um, accordingly um, and moves on to the next page uh, or next part of the page. Um, single page applications where it's kind of loading things. Um, this will then fire off some JavaScript that allow that kind of loads things. Um, and because there's this movement inside that kind of effectively, we, we need to think of it as a black box. Um, yes, we can look into it. So it's kind of grayish white, but it like um, we've clicked a link, um, some things have happened and then we need to do it. And so in those cases, when we, we do this, um, we might need to have web driver waits or um, kind of just explicit waiting to know that the element that we're looking for is there, that we've, uh, the next element that we're looking for is there, uh, that it's interactable and that we can move on. Um, and so uh, we've, we've done clicking, but like one of the things that I think is important to point out is that when it comes to navigation and uh, all of these other uh, bits and pieces that kind of clicking in actions is slightly different to kind of the previous click. Uh, so we like uh, Simon and the rest of the uh, committers, we like to kind of call it out, uh, call out the differences, kind of um, do what I mean versus do what I say. So the previous click was do what I mean. So it's like, I mean, click over there and do do things uh, with actions is do what I say. So I'm being very explicit of like, find this item, find this item, find this item, uh, click on it, drag here, click on it, things like that. Um, and so like if you, uh, from 
like a mobile phone analogy is like one is below the screen, the other one is above the screen. Um, actions tends to be above the screen because it's like, well, yeah, it's kind of moving things very explicit, um, explicitly, um, and you don't need to worry about scrolling and things like that. Um, and so here in this case, um, the clicks in actions and stuff like that will never uh, invoke any navigation um, concern like checks. Um, those need to be done separately uh, to kind of everything else. Um, this is because kind of you've reached a point where um, the driver thinks that is anticipating that you know exp what is happening and what should be happening um, nearly down to kind of the second or millisecond, right? Like, you know, that if I do these actions, um, the, the exact thing that's going to happen next you're expecting um, and you can either wait for elements or you can kind of, you'll know exactly what to do. And so kind of the, um, The navigation checks uh, are not done in this case. So kind of beware, make sure that your code uh, performs by itself and that it, um, it does all the necessary checks. Um, and then that's it. Um, I hope uh, everyone's found this uh, incredibly useful um, and uh, I think I'm hoping there might have been a few questions that have come up, but I will try my best to answer them. Uh, and um, thank you for your time. Cool. Thanks a lot, David. It was quite insightful. I'm looking at. Uh, Q&A panel. So folks, if you have any questions, please post on the Q&A sections. But before we begin that, I would like to thank our staff for sponsoring Selenium Conf and the track. It was just a comment that possibly the demo would have been helpful. I it's still okay. Uh, I, I did try to think about a demo. Um, one of the... Because a lot of the, the cases of where, like, it goes into the browser and we try, like, separate out, um, like, when it's going to do certain things, um, it's very. I didn't. I found it very hard to write a meaningful demo. Uh, so kind of like for the self-signed certificates, like I could do that and just show it going through. Um, but I felt a lot of people have probably seen that, and so it's it's very hard for me to kind of uh, balance it out. But uh, if I do this talk ever again, I will try to see um, like how I could do that. And if the commentator has any thoughts on what, what a good demo would be, I'd love to hear it and kind of can work with them to make sure I can show that up a bit. David, um, could you please talk about uh, which upon your thoughts on selling it for and the by, by day uh, version that you're working on? Um, okay. Uh, so, um, the, so Selenium 4, obviously, we've been working really hard on, um, and I'm really excited by some of the uh, work that's gone into it. So I've had some interns doing some work, and I've got um, some of my team helping out. Uh, so I'm really excited by that. The Baidai stuff, um, I think we're still trying to figure a lot of that out. Um, it's moving around. Um, the I'm for, like We're kind of basing the initial work of how um, CDP works, um, and so the Chrome Debug Protocol. Um, unfortunately, the Chrome Debug Protocol changes with every version, and so this is why kind of people need to download a Chrome driver with every version 
of Chrome, um, and you don't need to do that with Firefox. Um, and so kind of trying to understand that. Um, I think, like, in terms of my talk, I don't think many things are going to change too much other than, like, you'd be able to access um, and set mocks for certain uh, HTTPs. Um, HTTP requests, and you'd be able to do that. And so you can kind of have this hybrid test that you can do, like that some people do with uh, Puppeteer and Cypress, um, but, you know, have meaningful clicks and things like that and have proper actions. You know, these are the things that Puppeteer and Cypress don't have. Um, so you can do kind of more advanced uh, testing. Um, so I'm excited by it. I'm... I, Kind of, we're still trying to figure out what it's going to look like in a meaningful way. All right, I think uh, that's that's most of the question. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for that, Manoj. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Hope you have a great day.